And the salt is for preserving. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Glory, 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 glory. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Because we have a choice. Everyone turn to their neighbor and say, you got a choice. Yes. To rejoice. rejoice. Or you can be miserable, but don't tell nobody you know Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. And Matthew 7, would you go there with me this morning? Today the world celebrates Mother's Day. For all you mothers, God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Putting up with our children. <laughs> it's just another process of death, you know. I think the mothers were so frustrated, somebody finally decided to call it a celebration. And then the father said, wait a minute. We got to get in there too. Why? Because the kids celebrate every day. <laughs> yes, praise God. Selfies celebrate every day. <laughs> Matthew 7. In verse 13. Would you read it with me, please? Matthew 7, 13. Remember, what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. So if we speak light, we eat light, more darkness leaves. It's common sense in the spirit. So when you're going through stuff, you got to speak light. Amen. Amen? Amen? You don't try to figure it out and calculate it. Just start speaking light. Why? That's a way of escape. Too many times we're trying to figure it out because we're allowing the old man to take over. The old man loves to calculate. The new man, woohoo, don't give a hoot. He says, I just want Jesus. Verse 13, what does it say? Enter by the what? The narrow gate. The narrow gate. <laughs> For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction or hell, and, the way, and, and there are many who what? Go in by it. So he's telling us right off the bat, look at the, the path of righteousness, the path to really get home is narrow, and it's going to be difficult. In other words, it's not going to be easy. Uh, again, look at We never make progress when life is easy. Does everybody get that? You don't make progress when life is easy. In fact, you're not tested when life is easy. You're tested when life is tough. The problem is too many people run when life gets tough. They run. They blame other people. Everything that comes in your life, you bring on yourself. Does everybody get it? Everything. Why? Because you and I are the only ones that can allow something to come in or reject it you can even when you're offended you have a choice to turn it over to the Lord or stay offended and be miserable yeah. amen Does somebody get this yeah. okay verse 14 because narrow is the gate and difficult is a way which leads to what life and this is life abundance and there are a few who find it I mean, this is phenomenal. Jesus is saying, look, there isn't many that find this. There are not many that find life abundantly from the kingdom of God. They might find life abundantly from the carnal world. But there's a different life that's a life abundantly from the kingdom of God because that life is storing treasures for you in heaven. The other one is storing treasures for you in hell. Hello. <laughs> Come on, think about this. We're verse 15. What does it say? Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. And he's saying, beware of many Christians. 
You will know them by their what? Their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears what? Bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that, bear, that does not bear fruit is what? Cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you shall what? You're going to know them. So you're going to know someone. And this is your, for your protection and our protection. You know them by their fruit. So somebody comes up to you and says, look at man, uh, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. Um, but I just have my, I have my own doctrine. I just don't believe in fellowship. I don't believe in the Bible, I, but I, I love the Lord. Well, that person's an idiot. Because it's impossible. How are you going to know the Lord without knowing the Word? Because God always confirms His self with the Word. Amen? Amen? Now, He's given me and you the Holy Spirit. Here's a powerful thing. The gift of the Father to mankind was Jesus. The gift of Jesus to mankind was the Holy Spirit. Yes. I'm going to tell you the greatest gift that the Holy Spirit gave. Tongues. Amen. And the, many of the people still don't get it. The greatest gift that the Holy Spirit has given me and you is the gift of tongues. Why? Because it's self-edification. It speaks directly to the Father. It builds up your most holy face. It brings revelations. It even empowers you. But many people don't use that gift. Okay. So, therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Again, even when people politically elect officials, it should never be about what nationality, what color, what race, what they've done. You tell them by their fruits. Amen. Amen. Does everybody get it? Amen. You tell them whether they're promoters of same-sex marriage, whether they're promoters of abortion, or they're promoters of evil, whatever they're promoters of, you don't want to participate because if you vote for them, you approve of it, and you'll be judged in the same way. It's the same thing in everything that you and I do. You don't hang around with someone that's still out there fornicating and lying and cheating. And it's amazing. Can you imagine if a prophet, a so-called prophet of the Lord, shows up with a bottle of wine and a cigar, and he says, I got a word for you. You know what you got to say? I got a word for you. Hallelujah. Come out. <laughs> Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Look at this, verse 21. Read it with me. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. Those are people, look at, if somebody says Lord, Lord to him, it means that they believe they know him. Not everyone who says Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoa, this is powerful. But he who does the what? Will of my Father in heaven. I want you to grab hold of this. That is a reward. What does he say? If you do my will, you'll come home. See, and the only way to do the will is to submit. So there are, submission, there, there are rewards of submission. Does everybody get that? Everyone say there's rewards of submission. So without submission, is there a reward? No. Hmm. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Lawlessness. Again, that word lawlessness, the perfect law of God which we talked about already. The perfect law. It's called the perfect law of the spirit of life. Jesus practiced it. He implemented it. He empowered it. And he left it for me and you. And that law is deny yourself, pick up the cross or fight and follow. Well, that is the perfect law of submission. Because you can't even submit if you can't deny yourself. You can't even pick up a sword and fight. If you don't deny yourself. And you're not going to certainly follow. You'll be misled every time. 
That's why God has said, I'm going to reward those who are submissive. And he just told us here, if you do the will of God, I got a place for you home. Is everybody okay? Amen. Praise God. Luke, 20, uh, Luke 13. Praise God. See, I think Christianity, which we, we got new age Christianity going on right now. Amen. Is wide is the way to home. Does everybody get it? Yeah. There, there's so much new age, there's so much garbage, there's so much uh, openness in the arena of so-called Christianity where it becomes entertainment instead of relationship. Where it becomes entitlement instead of submission. Does everybody get it? That's not the way it is. Luke 13. In verse 27, please. Ooh. Okay, let's start at verse 24. It says again, strive to enter through the what? Narrow gate for money. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able to. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you. Where are you from? Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you. Where are you from? Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets of the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out, they will come from the east and from the west and from the north and the south and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, there are last who will be first and there are first who will be what? Last, in other words, many will seek another way. Many will seek another way. Oh, they're going to call it God's will, but they're really not submitting to God's will. Look at if you do not seek what God's will is in your life, you won't fulfill it. You'll be led astray by everything. You'll be led by, astray by emotions. So again, there are rewards in submission. Amen? And James chapter 1. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Blessed. Everyone say blessed. blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Cursed. Hello? So it says blessed is a man who what? Endures temptation. What about the man that doesn't endure temptation? He's cursed. For when he has been what? Approved, he will receive a reward called the what? Crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Now he is going to explain something which I don't think people really grab hold of all the time. He says, let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, because God doesn't tempt us, nor can he be tempted by evil. Nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is what? Drawn away by who? His own desires. In other words, your temptations, my temptations, are brought upon our own self. Everybody grab this. He says, when we are drawn away by our own desires and enticed. So your temptations only come because of a desire. So in other words, the enemy sends something, we agree with it. Don't even realize we agree with it. We say, I want this. Or desire even to want it. The enemy will come with temptation. Is everybody okay? Amen. <laughs> In verse 15, he says this then. Then when desire has conceived... 
it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. death. Because the wages of sin is death. Okay, so this is where you and I got to look at something. Everything that happens to me and you, we bring on. So people need to stop blaming everybody else. And I'm not saying that circumstances don't happen, right? I mean, it's like you're walking in your living room and you hit the corner of your coffee table. You can't blame the coffee table for hurting you. Although sometimes we do. Oh, that stupid coffee table. Now you may blame someone that moved it a little bit different, a couple inches. I can't believe she moved it that way. You know? Amen. <laughs> or whatever it is. But really, in reality, we bring it on ourselves. Amen? Amen? Anything that's going on in your life, you're going to bring on yourself. You can't blame no one or anything. But when things do happen, amen, we can learn from that in the arena where we need to shut that door right away. Instead of justifying why and blaming others why the enemy is still... See, even when you're blaming others, you're still eating up. In fact, the word says that the, the devil is the accuser of the enemy. I mean, he's the accuser of the brethren. Amen? So if the devil's accuser of the brethren, so what the enemy wants to do is cause you to blame others. It's the same thing. Now, people are going to make mistakes, aren't they? And so you'd be walking with someone and they make the mistake. Well, unfortunately, you were a cooperator with them. So something may be brought on yourself. If two people are in a car and one person, and the driver runs the red light, and two people get in an accident, well, you know what? You were there at that time. Sometimes there's an area where we're at the wrong place at the wrong time. Amen? And things come on. But it's still our fault because God would not lead you into that. He was trying to prevent you to get in from in, right in the car. He said, I had another way. Why would you turn right instead of left? Man, when you go left, you know there's always trouble. Hello? <laughs> Praise God. Reward of the crown by enduring temptation <laughs> that we bring on ourselves. So don't go around doing stuff to bring a, you know, to get a reward by trying to overcome temptation. Amen. It's our own desires. Rewards are something granted that you work for. Amen. Amen. A gift is a price someone else worked for. When you get a gift from someone, it's because somebody else worked for it. Has everybody got it? Your reward is something that you work for. When somebody gives you a gift, it's someone else that they worked for. Amen. That's why you and I have the gift of salvation. Somebody else worked for it. It's named Jesus. But there's something that you must do. You must uphold and maintain both the reward and the gift, or you could lose them. Why? Because the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. James 4. Verse 1. Let's speak it. Word of wars and fights come from among you. Do they not come from your desires for pleasure? that war in your members, you lust and do not have, you murder and covenant and cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your, spend it on your what? Your pleasures or your desires, which is going to bring more temptation. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God and do what? Resist the devil and he will flee 
from you. Resist. Okay, so uh, there is a reward here. There's a reward of grace for being humble. Grace is God's plan. Amen. It's God's plan to not only escape the deception of the devil and the wrath of God, but it's also a plan so that it's also an area where God will give you more. So in other words, again, it goes back to that perfect law. Deny yourself is the first part of the perfect law. Well, again, if you can't deny yourself, you can't be humble. Amen? So here he says, if you are humble, that means you, uh, only those who are humble can submit. He says here, look it, if you are willing to submit, I will give you more. But if you're going to be prideful, I'm going to reject from giving you more. And that's where people try to go out and get their more themselves. And they get in trouble. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. So the reward of grace is for being humble or submissive. Grace is God's plan. Grace is also through his plan. There's revelation. There's mysteries. There's blessings. Again, if you submit to the will of God, you'll be able to resist the devil. Everything is, there is a reward in submission. Ephesians 5. Verse 15. All right, I guess we can start at 14. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Days are evil. In fact, they're more evil now than they were before. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the what? What the will of the Lord is. Understand. In other words, go get understanding what the will of God is for you. But there's a process of the will of God. There's a foundation. There's everything. Does everybody get it? There's what? There's a foundation and there's a process. Verse 17. Therefore, what? Do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is understand what the will of the Lord is and let me tell you something it doesn't come in the mail <laughs> I'm telling you if you're waiting for a, an express next day air from the Lord that's the, what the will of God is it ain't coming he unfolds his will amen he unfolds his will, and by unfolding his will, he causes me and you to seek him. He causes me and you to have a relationship with him. He causes it. He says, don't be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be what? Filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in what? In the fear, reverence, honor, and respect. In the fear of the Lord, submitting to one another. So submitting in the fear of God by being filled with the Holy Spirit will bring more understanding of His will and interpretation of His Word. His Word is called a self-fulfilling power it is self-fulfilling the word of god is self-fulfilling who is it self-fulfilling for his self this is where he expresses himself so the word of god is self-fulfilling will of god almighty romans 10 is everybody there Romans 10 and verse 1. Brother, my heart's desire and power and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be what? That they may be what? Saved. Saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to the knowledge. For they being what? Ignorant. 
of, the, of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not done what? Submitted to the righteousness of God. See, there is an area of submission to the righteousness of God which brings you into a place of right standing with the Lord. And there are rewards for submitting. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who what? Who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Not, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That it is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will descend into the abyss. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be what? Saved. You'll be saved. Praise God. Submitting to the righteousness of God in obedience to his voice, his word, and those he's given over us. Does everybody get it? That are mentors. Hebrews 3. Hebrew. You know, we're all born rebels, amen? amen. amen. Rebellious, that means. Amen. Just in case. <laughs> we have to battle that all the time, don't we? Amen. My wife helps me battle that all the time. <laughs> Hebrews 3 and verse 7. No. Yeah. Okay, we'll go there. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you what? Hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Now, the word says that rebellion is of witchcraft. Amen. So when we are rebelling is because we are being influenced by a demonic influence. Rebellion, of course, says, I'm not submitting. I'm going to do my will. And that's where people fall. The moment you even think of it or agree with it, the enemy has access to you. Amen. Do not harden your hearts as a rebellion the day of the trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me and tried me. And saw my works 40 years. That's why it was 40 years. They kept testing them and trying them. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their heart. And they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest, which is a reward. That's why people are tormented. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For if, if we have become partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, while it is said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who, ha who having heard rebelled, indeed was it all who came out of Egypt led by Moses. Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who what? Sinned or rebelled? Whose corpses fell in the wilderness? Nice. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But those who did not obey or submit. Amen. Because obedience is, a, is submission. So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. Obey those. Obey them. Obey those who rule over you. That's why the word says be submissive to one another. He, Ephesians chapter 6.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6. Is everybody there? Amen. Verse 1. Praise God. What does it say? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise. In other words, with reward. That it may be well with you and that you may live long on earth. So if you want to go home quickly, just disobey your parents. Amen. You're going to die at a young age. Oh, no, they're not going home. Amen. Well, rebellion is their home. Amen. Amen. You know, in the Old Testament, they used to stone the kids to death. Can you imagine that? A parents finally got fed up with a child and said, okay, we're done. Here, take them. And they would bring that child out and everyone would stone that child to death. Amen. Thank God for his grace. Amen. Or we'd all be dead. <laughs> there wouldn't be anybody in this room. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admoni admonishing of the Lord. Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and sincerity of heart as to Christ. In other words, your bosses. <laughs> Not with eye service as men pleasers, but also as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. See, many people don't do the will of God from the heart. They try to do it from the mind. Because there really isn't a sincerity in it. They're only trying to do it to get a reward. But it doesn't work. With good will, doing services to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. And you masters do the same things to them, giving up, threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might by putting on the whole armor of God that you are, may be able to stand against the tricky or wiles of the devil. And there's where people, many fall. People don't put on the full armor of God. They just get up, have their coffee. Good morning. See ya. No warfare, no binding and loosing, no intercession, no nothing. Thinking that they have an entitlement because they're a Christian. Amen. That's not how it is. Amen? That's not how it is. Matthew 6. Thinking that there's entitlement because they go to church. That's not how it is. But it will bring help, I can tell you that. <laughs>
stewards of the mysteries of God, servants to the anointing, and ambassadors of Christ. 2 Thessalonians 3. In verse 10. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this. If anyone will not work, neither will he eat. No working, no eating. <laughs> For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner. Not working at all, but are busybodies. Now those who are such... We command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. It, and if anyone does not obey or submit our word to the, of this epistle, note that person and don't keep company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every, every way. The Lord be with you in all. Disorderly individuals are out of order because of non-submission. Somebody get it? Because you can't be in order if you're not submitting. It's impossible. And of course, there will be no reward, even though they fight for a reward. How many of you know God wants to bless you? But he'll bless only those who are in divine order. I'm talking about blessings. He, he lets it rain on the wicked and the righteous. He's going he's gonna to provide because he's waiting for people to get salvation and get saved. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. But there's an area of blessing of life and life abundantly. The riches of God is the most important thing. The mysteries of God. It's not about how much money you make. See, people always go by how much money they make, whether they're being blessed or not. Or how much material they have. That has got nothing to do with it. It's how rich you are in Christ. It's how much you are allowing the Holy Spirit to possess you. It's how much His divine character is in you and expressing Himself through you. It's how much light you carry. It's how much joy you have. It's how grateful you are. The riches of Christ is a glorious thing. See, when you are rich in Christ, you don't care about nothing else. Yes, unfortunately, the world revolves around money. Amen? It does. I mean, you couldn't build a tabernacle without some cash. Unless you had a bunch of volunteers. But you had to have money to buy food and whatever, you know. But even still, everything that revolves around the world is associated with money. So God wants to bless us. He wants us to pro prosper. In fact, prosperity is a reward. But it, not to be greedy or lovers of money. But first it starts off with the perfect law. Deny yourself. Get in divine order. And things begin to get released. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Philippians 2. Glory, glory, glory. See, the enemy comes in so many sly ways and, and and one of the things he he comes in an area especially in the area of financial uh, of money money is one of the ways he sways so easily it's always about money you know and you know so many times people uh quit their jobs looking for more money one of the things you always want to look at in your job arena is did you reach everyone there? Does everybody get it? Did you reach everyone there? See, because the enemy wants to move you out before you reach everyone there. And you are an example. That's by being consistent. God always wants you to be able to reach everyone where you're at. That's your ministry. If you're going to move by money, then you're out of order. Well, I've been promised this, and I've been promised that. Oh, too bad. The God, God's reward is the greatest promise for you, not man's reward. 
If you're going to get looked to get rewarded by men, then you're out of order. Your reward comes from God. Not that he doesn't use man to reward you, but you know it's coming from the Lord when you're being rewarded by a man. You know at a certain time. And you also know when somebody's trying to reward you from the enemy. Amen? But remember, we're the light in dark, going in the dark areas. God wants us to reach as many souls as possible. That's the mission. That's the ministry. Don't let money move you or offense move you. I didn't like how he talked to me. I'm going to find another job. Oh, you flesh creature, you. Soulish head. You don't move until you know that you know that you know, and you don't move by assumption. You don't move by feelings. You move when God tells you to move, and you have confirmation on that move. More than one. Amen? Praise God. Guess I needed to say that. Huh? Where are we going now? <laughs> Philippians 2. Woohoo! <laughs> Philippians chapter 2 is just for you. In verse 1, let's, uh, no, verse 12, I'm sorry. Let's speak it together. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but how much more in my absence, work out your, your what? Your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Reward. Working out. Look at Working out your salvation means submitting. To work out something means submitting to something. Amen? That's where we work it out. Submission is obedience. Obedience is submission. Romans 2. You know, God brings challenges to me and you. I've always found out when the thing that I don't want to do, but I know I got to do it, there's always a great reward. <laughs> you know, I just really don't want to do this, Lord, but I'm going to do it because you want me to do it. Good. That's all he's looking for. I'm going to do it because you want me to do it. You know what you're doing? You're showing him the respect and you're showing him that you love him. I'm going to do it because you want me to do it, not because I want to do it. Because, see, if you get to the point that you want to do it, then you're falling out of the perfect will or the perfect uh, law, which is deny yourself. Deny yourself. Now, I'm not saying God doesn't give you a desire to go do something, amen? But there are certain things that you don't want to do, but you know that God wants you to do it. <laughs> you just know God wants you to do it, but you don't want to do it. But when you do it, there is a great reward. And it, look at so many times, I got to share this. The problem that we have today is because the world is a drive through Amen. Everything's drive through I want it now. If I don't get it now, then it can't be. God don't work that way. This is not drive through salvation. It's work out your salvation. Amen? So in this, just because you've done something finally that you obeyed, doesn't mean you're going to get rewarded right then. Amen. Well, it's good for two weeks. <laughs> People want to get rewarded right then and there. It doesn't work that way. You've got to allow God to bring the reward. Amen. Amen? But he's going to. As long as you're consistent. Amen. He's looking for you to be consistent because the greatest thing he wants to do is be able to trust you. When you're not consistent, he can't trust you. Then you're searching out your own rewards. He rewards those who are consistent. 
not, un not unconsistent. Amen? So just because it didn't come right away doesn't mean it's not coming. So don't quit. Well, it didn't happen. I was good for a week, two weeks. Or I did this or I did that. Well, I showed up to work for a month. Woohoo! I've been working there a year and I only got 25 cents. Well, maybe you're laboring on yourself and not the Lord. See, you've got to look at the way God sees things, not the way we see things. That's why we got to get in that perfect law, which is the only thing that's going to manifest. That's what you and I live for, is to get in that perfect law where we deny ourselves, pick up the cross of fight, and follow. Amen? Amen? All glory. Romans chapter 2. Verse 1. Speak it together, please. Romans 2, verse 1. Therefore you are an excusable man, whoever you judge for, and whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. Why? Because you judge and practice the same thing. <laughs> Do you ever get around people that can counsel really good, but they can't practice what they counsel? Boy, yeah. oh, they got everything they want to tell you, but they can't do it themselves. But we know that the judgment of God is according to the truth against those who what? Practice truth. Practice such things. I'm sorry. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man or woman, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to what? Amen. Repentance. But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent, impenitent. They don't just put hardened, rebellious heart. You are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteousness judgment of God who will render to each one according to his deeds or submissions or obedience. What's he say? Eternal life to those who by practice, by, pra by patient, continue. Everyone say continue. continue. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But those, to those who are self-seeking Selfies. And do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish in every soul of a man who does evil, of the Jew first and also the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for there is no partiality in God. Mm. First Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Is everybody okay? Amen. In verse 9. For we are God's fellow workers. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're a fellow worker. <laughs> you are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed in how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work, which he has built on, endures, he will receive a reward, because he submitted to the will of God and built according to the will of God and not their own will. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet as so through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? 
If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If any among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. Why? For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of, of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Hey, everything's mine in Christ Jesus. As long as I obey and submit. Amen. Amen. God rewards us with healing. He rewards us with prosperity. He rewards us with favor. He rewards us with abundant life. Amen? Amen? But depending on what we're submitting to, there is always a reward. Again, if you're going to eat Twinkies, you're going to become a Twinkie. <laughs> Amen? If you're eating junk food, you become junky. If you're eating light, you become light. All these things are according to what we submit to. Because all submission has a reward. <laughs> so if you're submitting to the things that are not of God, you're going to receive a reward. But it ain't going to be from God. Second John 1. Second John chapter 1. Or Second John. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 4, let's speak it together. I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth as we receive commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. This is love that we walk according to his commandments this is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning you should walk in for many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh this is deceiver and antichrist look to yourselves that we do not lose thing those things we worked for but that we may receive a what full reward hmm. If anyone comes, uh, whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not receive a re full reward, amen? amen? And does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. And if anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, don't receive him into your house nor greet him. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. So we don't want to miss the full reward. Amen. Remember, there's all kinds of, there's so much distraction out there and kinds of false doctrines and all kinds of things going on that we have to be careful. Second, second Peter chapter one. A couple more verses. Second Peter chapter one. So because you didn't get your reward, are you going to quit? No. no. You continue to go. Amen. Amen. The greatest thing that God wants to do is that we earn his trust. Amen? Amen. That should be your greatest desire. Lord, I want to earn your trust. That is everything. That should be everything to you. I want to earn your trust. I want you to trust me without borders. Amen? Amen? See, if, if your heart is really that in that arena and you really desire and you want that, you've got relationship. Other than that, that's distant or is it drifting? I want to earn your trust. Why? Because you want to please them. First, uh, Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises. 
How do you get a promise, which is known as a reward? You submit. That through these you may be what? Partakers of the divine nature have an escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, Virtue to virtue, knowledge to knowledge, self-control to self-control, perseverance to perseverance, godliness to godliness, brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness, love. For these, the, for if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be what? Barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his Old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never what? Stumble. For so an entrance, which is a reward, will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter five. Rewards of submission. Let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Submit yourself. I said submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be what? Submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. That means reward. Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. But you got to be what? Sober, alert, and vigilant, consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour or get out of position. It says, resist him. How? Steadfast, we're in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, so you ain't the only one. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have been challenged, <laughs> suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. <laughs> Remember, it all goes back to the perfect law again. Jesus brought that perfect law, the perfect law of submission, resisting self, resisting self, resisting self, denying yourself. Denying yourself. And I'm going to close at Revelation 22. Revelation 22 and verse 12. And what does he say? He says, Behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work, actually his submission. Amen? I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments or his will, and you can't do his will without submitting, right? That they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs. Now, he does not mean for legged barking <laughs> these are humans he calls them dogs why because they're demonized individuals this is what a dog is in the bible outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexual immoral and murders and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears, come. And let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life, what? Freely. That's the reward. <laughs> water of life, freely. Glory. Reward by submitting. Reward by obedience. But you must be consistent. Amen? Just because you were a goodie for a little while doesn't mean you're going to get rewarded yet. 
but the reward is on its way. Amen? Remember, God wants me and you to be prosperous, blessed, highly favored, and far above all we could ever ask or think. But we must strive, fight, battle to stay in position so that it will manifest and not get taken out of position. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the seed again that has been imparted in us be protected by the blood of Jesus and grow and bear fruit for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen.